Where's my bin? Ah. Oh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best fancy fancy birth birth test location in the southwest of England. So today is a very special day here at the Rep. It is Heavy Repping's second birthday, and that marks two years since I stood in the empty rehearsal room down the road in the freezing cold, filming this on my own, having no idea how I was going to do it, with no software editing experience whatsoever. Now we're in a very different place, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about the most important picks that have come through the door in the last 12 months. But before we do that, uh, a little shout out to you is because we passed 500 subs, uh, which is a massive deal for a channel of this nature, and I really, really can't thank you enough. If you would like to like and subscribe down there, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to start off with a little bit of an ego trip because I had a couple of custom picks turn up. Uh, they are up here. They are from Honey and Hawk picks. Both Honey and Hawk have made some incredible stuff. Uh, Hawk primarily with casein and Honey primarily with acrylic and kernite. But both companies are excellent. Genuinely, genuinely uh, amazing to receive in the post and something in, in which I take no small amount of pride. Uh, really they are fab and uh, they're excellent picks as well. So muchas gracias boys, you let me know I was doing something. Next on the list is two picks from Crow's Customs. Now Liam has been making some fab stuff uh, over the last little while, uh, primarily from wood. He's more of a wood and tagawa sort of guy. I love his tagawa work, but he made two picks which really did go into my brain in a big way. Uh, the first of which is the Oru, which is here, which is uh, wood on both sides with tagawa in the center. I have taken a photograph of this um, to reflect its current state because I've been playing it a lot. Uh, especially on on the stick, which is currently tuned CGC, FGC, with some fairly heavy strings on, uh, which is why the wood has worn away somewhat, because I'm not exactly a tickler. The other pick, however, is even more special because it was commissioned for me by Iron Cat Guitar. Uh, now, Iron Cat has become something of a mascot in the Plectroverse, a status with which I am fully aware he is very proud, but he's been a big, big supporter of the community and he's working very closely with Liam on secret things. Uh, and he got in touch with them and said, make John whatever he wants uh, and I will settle the bill, which was very, very kind of him. And that resulted in this, which is one of my favorite uh, pictures of the year that I've taken. Another hand maker who made some unreal stuff in the last 12 months and continues to impress me with each following Plectrum is uh, Rens over at Hendrix Picks. He's a blacksmith, so of course he makes Plectrums. And uh, he made this, which is the fork. Now the fork is one of my favorite, not just important picks, but one of my favorite picks of the last two years because it's made from Ivoroid with cork on either side. It, it shouldn't, it kind of shouldn't work really. I mean, cork grips go all the way back to the twenties, so it's not that uncommon a thing, but he is seated to the cork in both the front and back of the pick, and the feel of it is great. I have worn the nub down significantly. Renz tends to make his picks kind of sharp. Uh, this one is now blunt as a spoon, but I keep using it. Uh, it feels amazing, and I, I really can't thank him enough for all the work he's done and how much he's supported me. So, Renz, thank you all. Now, I've talked about Bailey New World before, and indeed, Renz is also quite a young chap. Uh, both those guys are cracking on and doing their thing, which is ace, but we also had two other young men join the game, uh, one of whom is J Metalar, and the other is uh, Jacob Strauss at Glitch Picks. Now, both these guys I was thrilled to see, and for very, very different reasons. J Metalar has been a staunch supporter of the rep. Uh, ever since day one, pretty much, and uh, I'd like to think of us as pals. Uh, he sent me his earliest stuff, his razor blade suitcase, and he also sent me this amazing glitter piece that's up here. Uh, he's refining his techniques all the time, and even though he started on bone, he's favouring uh, acrylic now. I think it's wicked what he's doing, uh, and there'll be reviews of that to come in the coming weeks. I'd also like to give a big shout out to Jacob because Jacob decided to, <laughs> he decided to get into the plot traverse at the deep end, which was to say, I'm gonna make a pick with three tips 
as my as my opening gambit, which is a pretty bold thing to do even when you've been in the game a long time. He makes from uh, a lot of resins and honeycomb material and so on, and his were some of the picks I was the most excited to receive this year, partly because I loved the fact that he was going in so deep so soon, uh, and the fact that he was putting all of his working on Instagram live streams and showing himself making every single pick heavy props. I did do a video on this box earlier in the year, but I'd like to illustrate again uh, for those of you who missed that, and if you did, I forgive you, um, that this box which came to me from uh, Zwart Picks in Italy was one of my most hotly anticipated things of the year, partly because it's filled with incredible things like um, this mad coconut like concept plectrum, but also because it contained the onigiri and this is the pick that fundamentally changed my view of batik plectrums because I'd seen people doing all kinds of crazy things with plastic. This was a pick that I could, I could feel every moment of crafting that had gone into this. There's, uh, what, five pieces in this thing? Uh, bone, ebony and flame maple. It is perfectly perfectly finished almost to the point of looking machined and if I didn't know Emanuele so well uh, and the level of work he puts in I would say there was witchcraft at play. To Tobeni. Now those of you who are keen observers of the channel will know that obviously I did a video on the giant Chibson uh, which Joe Bonamassa has now done a little video on although he cheated and held it down here I played it the proper way from the top. This was an utterly ridiculous moment but it was very, very important for the community. The Plectroverse gets taken kind of for granted because millions and millions of guitar players and bazooki players and mandolin players and banjo players and stuff use picks worldwide. But a lot of them don't think about it. They just buy whatever's in the shop and that's kind of it. Everybody can look at that and know exactly what it is and more importantly, what it's lampooning. I think that's a really important thing to remember. This put picks for whatever reason good or bad, this put picks in the public eye and it made guitarists say, oh hey, isn't that ridiculous, but maybe I should look into picks a little bit more. Thank you, Chibson. That was cool. One of the most important things that happened this year was that I got to interview a bunch of people. The majority of the old school guys, Guy DeVille's, who I've interviewed, Brian Bouchard, who I've also interviewed, uh, Tina Holmes and Jeff White of Plectrum Spectrum, they all exist on Facebook primarily because of Mr. Guy Devils, I was in a position not just to get the pointless picks, there's a review of those coming up, don't you worry, but I also got my hands on these. Now this is a huge, huge thing for me. These are from the Will Hoover collection. Will Hoover literally wrote the book on picks, which is called Picks, the Story of Celluloid. It is this. I've talked about this uh, a lot before on the channel, and I'm gonna be doing an audiobook version of this later in the year, or possibly early next year, because it's quite big. That to own this, I'll never play with this, but to own this was, is that's genuine collector stuff, and I was incredibly proud. Nice. A maker that's meant a lot to the community is uh, Duncan at Zen. Uh, Duncan lives in the UK, he's just uh, on the other side of the country from me, and he made this, which is his Kintsugi Plectrum. Now, because we've had, we've just had Mental Health Awareness Day, I do want to talk about this a little bit. I've had some pretty ropey times the last few years, uh, especially in the last, especially in the last five years, if I'm honest, um, for lots and lots of reasons I'm not going to go into now, but I've had plenty of problems with depression and mental health issues for most of my life, um, which I'm working very hard to get on top of. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because the principle of this pick, the idea behind its creation and all these cracks and everything in it that have been filled in with gold, is based on a Japanese principle of Kintsugi, which is the idea that if a pot is broken, it's repaired using gold and silver to celebrate those cracks and those accidents, because it's those mishaps and those difficulties that make the pot stronger than it was. Now, I'm a great believer in that, and I found it quite moving to receive this from Duncan. It's very easy for us not to talk about this stuff, and it's very, very hard still for people to discuss it. So, the pit community 
has been incredibly supportive of itself and of all of the people in it. You all talk to each other, you all celebrate things and your achievements. There's minimal sniping, there's bound to be some in, some in any community, uh, but it's wonderful to see how much everybody cares for each other and that really means a lot. That pick is a representation of that. It's a representation of how important it is to be supportive because we're all going through things big and small and to know that somebody's got that in the back of their mind when they're making these things a tool of expression, that's really important to me. Something that arrived in the post that I genuinely can't use, though I have tried, is this. This is a batchy uh, from Raven Music. It's handmade uh, out of acrylic and wood and kerenite, I think, in the bottom. I can't remember. The shamisen is constructed completely differently to the guitar, so that makes using this almost impossible. But it was the first time that I really went outside the traditional Western remit uh, just to see how far this goes and I'll be covering a lot more stuff I can point at you like that I'll be covering a lot more stuff of this nature in the future when I talk to some instrumental specialists so important because it's very very cool but also because it is emblematic of what is to come so this is the final and most important thing uh, if I'm totally honest of what happened this year and the reason why this is so important is because of what it represents and who it represents. So I mentioned the vintage community earlier and the guy that is widely regarded to be at the head of that community is Joe Macy. Now Joe is responsible for the seven part series I did on vintage picks. He wrote that. I've also got a piece coming up about uh, the history of French picks and the French being at the forefront of pick development in its early period as we go into the 20th century. But Joe sent me this. Rather than being one pick, it is many. Bert Whedon's, uh, Richie Blackmore's, a Carol Kay from back in the 1960s. These are Japanese ones. And in this little green pouch in the middle, there was a memory card. And on that memory card was photographs of Joe's collection. Now you've got to bear in mind that this guy's collection is not like my collection, which can be contained within this room. Uh, Joe's collection is enormous. It's in tens of thousands of plectrums and I have seen it, he phoned me a couple of weeks ago uh, and I got to see and I got to see the inside of the house and it's just trays and trays and trays and trays of stuff um, which was absolutely mind-blowing to witness uh, I got to interview Joe this year, he sent me a couple of articles to publish and, and I can't stress this enough, he trusted me with this now the reason why that's important, and I'm going to talk totally straight to you for a minute here, the reason why that's important is the old guard who collected vintage picks are getting on in years and as a relatively young man I am proud to be taking the information that they have collected and sharing it with more people in the modern era. I'm a modern collector, not a vintage collector. Uh, my knowledge of vintage stuff grows by the day, but it's still very, very small compared to the work that these people have been doing. Uh, and for Joe to have the station that he has within the community and to trust me with this, to take the time to send me this unprompted was a, such a huge thing. And it genuinely, genuinely, I, am, I was properly taken aback by that. Because in all honesty, heavy repping gives me purpose. I work in a guitar shop, I do a radio show, um, and I do this. And this takes up most of my thinking time and a lot of my life. Uh, when I share these videos with you, it's not because I'm doing it for clout and I'm doing it for views. This is still a small channel. Um, but I'm proud of what we're doing here. And it means a lot to me. And for somebody of his standing and his nature to do this, one enthusiast to another meant the world to me. And as a pinnacle of achievement this year, that was pretty cool. So, um, so yeah, Joe, if you're watching this, thank you. If you watched this far into the video, thank you. I know not everybody watches the whole way through because it's YouTube. Um, but every second you watch means the world to me. It all counts. Uh, and I've got special things coming up for you uh, in the times to come. My name is John Tron Davidson. This glorious thing is heavy repping. So remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy.